بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على إشرف الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to this read through of contemplating the Quran a thematic guide to the 30 parts of the Holy Quran Alhamdulillah tonight we'll reach the 26th juice of the Quran covering Surah Al-Ahqaf to Surah Al-Dhariyat and the uh, theme of this juice is power builds, it does not destroy. God has favoured man with diverse faculties, physical, intellectual, spiritual. He has distinguished him with a rationality and a soul, which is one of his divine secrets, whilst making his physical prowess something that he shares with the animal kingdom. In fact, many of them surpass him in this. It is rather in his intellectual and spiritual power his ability to receive divine commands and prohibitions and comprehend divine revelation that he surpasses creation. Considering this, he should use all of his faculties in pursuit of the lofty objectives for which God created him, so as to be duly grateful. What a dreadful wastage of this magnificent blessing it would be, and what loss it would incur if his intellect were to impel him to the worship of stones that bring no benefit, as mentioned in verse 5. And were it to direct him to deprecate the opinion of others, purely because of an unwillingness to investigate the good that they possess, would he not be sinful indeed? Verse 11. If he were to reach the age of forty, and not take cognizance of all he has missed through deficiencies, make preparations for his journey to eternity, and equip himself for his final resting place, then truly he has lost everything. Verse 15. If he extinguishes his faculties and exhausts his strength in pursuit of fading pleasures and evanescent delights, then how wretched will his fortune be, and how poor a bargain he will have struck. Verse 20. If one does not put to good use the faculties that God has placed within one, like hearing, sight, and feelings, in pursuit of understanding and faith, then what is the point of these blessings? Verse 26. Take hearing, for example. The jinn, with all their ancient strength and decisive power, fell silent when they heard the Qur'an recited, humbled before God. Recognising that it was the truth, they responded and returned, bearing these tidings to their folk. This is 29 to 31. It is in his physical prowess that beguile, it is, his, it is this physical prowess that beguiles and deludes man, causing him to rebel against his Lord, make war on his friends, and hinder those who would be guided. In the first verse of the next surah. What can be more terrible than a strength which destroys its bearer and returns him only wretchedness and calamity? The following verses tell us of people like this, whose strength misled them. They heard good but did not pay, the, pay heed. Rather, when they left the presence of the messenger, they said mockingly, What was that he just said? Or, what was that he just said? Verse 16. Any quality that impels man to sow corruption on earth and sever bonds of kinship, is a quality of the willfully blind. Verse 22. Indeed, any quality that makes man malevolent is, in reality, the result of a sickness of heart and weakness of spirit, even if outwardly it appears to be strength. Verse 29. True strength lies in overcoming the appetites and avariciousness of the soul, to bend it to one's will, to accustom it to all manner of hardships, and spend fearlessly in the way of God. He who gives triumphs. He who withholds or commands a miserliness loses out. Verse 38. Surah Al-Fatih tells us of some of the instances in which human energies were expended in vain, presenting for us the scene of a group of Bedouins from among the hypocrites who withheld their time and effort. They presented the excuse of being busied by, busied by their families and wealth, whilst just earlier they had been the first of those to seek the spoils. This verses 11 to 15. An onlooker might have been convinced of the strength of these people. Indeed, they were convinced of their own strength. But in reality, their hearts were disordered and their spirits weak. When they were called to fight, they did not respond, whilst the believers, those of true strength, came forth, ready to expend their very lifeblood without delay, just as those noble companions who had sworn fealty to the Prophet ﷺ beneath the tree. God was pleased with their oath, and blessed its fruits. Verse 18. Another example of false strength is that of tribal partisanship 
Jahiliya, in which human wisdom was conspicuously absent, and in which rationality was lost in futile fits of rage and repellent folly, plunging them into every type of stupidity. Verse 26. In contrast to this, you find the one possessed of an, in, of an intact faculty clearly manifesting taqwa, whose signs are tranquility, compassion for others, and worshipfulness. Verse 29. But Surah Al-Hudurat informs us, informs us of another type of strength, the strength of love and mutual fellowship among believers. It teaches us the necessity of preserving that strength by establishing a process of reconciliation between conflicting parties and prohibiting hatred between believers. In verse 6. There is also a strength to be found in character traits that typify the preservation of human dignity and of the avoidance of the type of slander and tail-bearing that triggers enmity and distance one from baseless suspicion and negative opinions of others. In verse 12. Surah Al-Qaf makes clear that pure faculties enlighten man as to the power of God, such that he turns to him, in verse 8, and brings about the recognition of God's proximity to him, that he may not be thwarted in his hopes, as in verse 16. This is the faculty that wards off arrogance, misguidance, and transgression, verse 27, the faculty that instills awe of God and fulfilment of his rights, such as worship and glorification, in verse 40. It rouses its possessor during the night when all are lost in slumber. It's in Surah Jathiyat, verse 17. That he turns his whole self to seeking forgiveness, eyes overflowing with tears. This is the faculty that truly benefits and truly exalts. We ask Allah to make us people of true strength and true kinship and to preserve us from false strength and its illusion. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. برحمة الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته